In a previous module, we looked at the advanced WLAN options from accounting server all the way down to access VLAN. In this module, we're going to look at the rest of the options under advanced, beginning with hide SSID. When we hide the SSID, we remove the WLAN name from a beacon. This is of limited security value. And if you'd like to know more about hiding the SSID, there's a separate video that explains it in detail. Tunnel mode allows us to tunnel traffic back to the zone director. When it's enabled, it changes the following option on the screen. If we look here, if we enable tunnel mode, then the proxy ARP option now changes to DHCP relay. Here we can enable the DHCP relay agent, but first we need to have a DHCP relay service configured. Let's have a look at that now. It's fairly straightforward to configure a DHCP relay agent. It's done under configure, and then down here at the bottom we'll see DHCP relay. We just go in and select create new. I'll just call it relay one. And we add the IP address. I'll just make something up here, 192.168. Dot zero dot let's say 83 for example and then we click OK and there it is it's listed here as DHCP relay 1 back now to tunnel mode when we select tunnel mode we can enable the DHCP relay agent and it will ask us which agent we want to select for this particular WLAN DHCP relaying is a fairly standard procedure. It just allows devices on a particular subnet to reach DHCP servers that are perhaps on another subnet. And configuration of the relay agent is quite simple. So it's something that you should be quite comfortable with doing. Let's remove the tick from tunnel mode. And we see now that the DHCP relay agent changes back to proxy ARP. If we enable proxy ARP, it allows the access point to proxy ARP requests on behalf of clients attached to the WLAN and that cuts down broadcast traffic. We have the option here to disable background scanning and at first you would think that that means that this WLAN is not going to perform background scanning but of course this affects the entire radio. Why would you do this? Well if you have networks so you want to maintain a standard and steady connection state on the channels available such as VoIP WLANs you don't want the access point to go off and scan and come back so naturally this is going to be for the entire radio and not just the WLAN. However, what you can do is you can disable load balancing. It's enabled by default, but you can disable load balancing and that will apply to this WLAN only. So we can take the tick out of there and that disables load balancing. Note when background scanning is enabled, it's not possible to disable load balancing. So if I disable background scanning, then we can also disable client load balancing and that just applies to this WLAN only. If we have a look now at band balancing, we can see that actually we don't have the option to disable band balancing. If we were to be able to do it, this would apply just to this WLAN. And we can see also that it doesn't really matter whether background scanning is enabled or disabled here. Now, if this is disabled uh, or we are unable to change it, then we need to go back to the services and see if actually band balancing is set up. And load balancing is the same. So let's just take a second to go to configure and down to services and under services we can see well background scanning is set okay uh, load balancing currently isn't set so let's enable that and let's enable band balancing let's apply both of those and let's go back now to the WLANs and see what the options are so here we are now back in the advanced options and we can see once again with background scanning enabled, then we do not have the option to change load balancing. So we've already been through that. We can now disable load balancing. And now we have the option to disable band balancing too. So don't forget if these options are not configurable is because they're not enabled globally. And we do that back in settings. Okay, let's take a look now at max clients. Well, the max client setting is a performance issue. We don't want to have too many clients connecting to a WLAN on an access point because then we will have a lot more devices contending for the medium. So even though we can say this WLAN can support 100 clients, it doesn't mean that if we add another WLAN, we can suddenly support another 100 clients. So we need to think when it comes to our strategy, what's the performance requirements that we want and therefore how many devices would we like to support? 
Well, 802.11d support uh, only operates in the 2.4 gigahertz band. And what it does is it adds a country code element to the beacon for 2.4 gigahertz. It tells the supporting clients that pick up the beacon and can read this field uh, what the country code is at the access point set to, what the channels are that are in use, and what the maximum power settings are allowed for that country code. Now, DHCP option 82, if we select here, gives us a whole new range of options and it's quite advanced it's a little bit outside the scope of this course so if you do want to know more about this i suggest that you look into a dhcp scopes and setups and the use of dhcp option 82 so we'll just disable that and move on force dhcp means that we are going to force a dhcp address onto the client now there are a number of reasons why we might want to do this. Number one, it could be a client connects that has an IP address that's going to clash with another device on our network, so we want to prevent that. Secondly, a device with a fixed address could be in uh, a subnet that's not compatible with our subnet, so he's never going to be able to participate in network operations because he has the wrong IP address. And thirdly, it could be that our DHCP scope and our capacity is full and the client is not able to pick an IP address. Therefore, if we uh, force DHCP clients that are either incompatible and not able to pick up an address are not able to connect to the WLAN and that actually makes sense because what it does it tells the client that he can't participate uh, and without him actually trying to connect up with expectations and using resources. Client RXTX statistics tell the zone director to ignore any statistics that it would pick up and analyze from unauthorized clients. What that does, it makes sure that the statistics that you do have are based on the connected devices. Client fingerprinting, where well, we looked at that previously, it's enabled by default. And what this does is it enables the zone director to identify and display the client operating systems. Moving on next, we'll look at the OFDM only setting. OFDM only means that we can enable OFDM only rates on the BSS, but let's have a look first at the next setting, which is BSS min rate. If we scroll down, we can see that we're setting the minimum data rate possible usable within the BSS, and these are the legacy HR DSSS and DSSS rates. So we've got 1, 2, 5.5. We can also set a minimum data rate of 12 or 24. If we enable OFDM only, what it does is it takes away the option to use those legacy DSSS and HR DSSS rates. So our minimum BSS rate then is now either 12 or 24. Let's also note that here in the management transmit frame rate that uh, if we enable or disable, then that also changes the options here. The management transmit rate is the rate that management frames will be transmitted at. If we enable OFDM only, obviously, then it's going to be locked into the 6 megabits per second. If we take away OFDM only, then we've got the option to specify the management rates. All of these changes are changes that you would only make if you had a deep understanding of WLAN operations at the physical and Mac layer. You would need to have very solid reasons for making these changes and the means to thoroughly assess the impact of these changes. That's by doing deep analysis into the network performance. As with all of these settings, the best recommendation is to let the controller make the decisions and so leave everything as the default. But if you do need to uh, analyze and tune your network, these are some of the settings that you're going to want to look at. Closing down towards the final few settings now, the next one is the service schedule. This determines when the WLAN will be active. The default is always on. You can also select always off. That allows you to configure the WLAN and make your settings before it's actually pushed out and available to the clients. Alternatively, we can go for specific. And if we choose that, we see this time window opens up. And what we do, we just simply drag across certain zones. And that means when it's blue that the WLAN will be active. And when it goes to the default white background, that the WLAN will be turned off. This is useful for things like schools and offices where you don't want to have, uh, for example, the network to be available out of office hours, which kind of makes sense because what it means then is that uh, your networks will be turned off and therefore not, accept, uh, not accessible. And that's a good idea for security, for example. So here I'm just going to put some random time values in and we can see 
um, from this uh, we click to enable and uh, then we click again to disable we can just set whatever times that we want to have uh, I'm going to put that back to always on next we have auto proxy and what auto proxy does is it enables us the means to push down proxy server details this is if we're proxying on the local network and we want our browsers to automatically connect to a proxy server then we can push this WPAD dat file down to those devices uh, but ultimately we have the inactivity timeout and what this will do is will terminate sessions for clients that have gone idle uh, we don't know why they've gone idle for example in high traffic areas this is a very useful thing because what it does is it frees up resources quite quickly uh, so basically if we haven't heard from the client within five minutes then he will be terminated and the very last on the list is radio resource management if we enable 802.11k neighbor reports then fast roaming clients are able to request from the access point a list of potential neighboring access points that could be the next in line for a roam to this is usually used with voice networks uh, radio resource management 802.11k again it's one of those things you need to understand why you enable it and you enable it only under the circumstances where you do actually need it well that brings us to the end of the advanced settings so now you have enough information to make your WLANs set up the basic configurations and tune those settings in the advanced settings